So I have some great news that Donald Trump's day keeps on getting even worse. We already spoke about how the last couple days for him have been totally abysmal, which is fantastic for us to hear. But now he's just gotten two pieces of info from not only a lawyer, but also a doctor delivering him terrible news about his legal health and his physical health. And it's so bad in so many ways. First, the lawyer in a way with such a confidence I haven't seen seen yet makes it absolutely clear that it's time to indict Trump up and get us on the process of chucking him in to an orange jumpsuit. And then perhaps more embarrassingly, more damagingly, a doctor that has a rare personal knowledge of Donald Trump is confirming not only that his entire life is falling apart, but had that, but that his particular type of illness, the severe illness he's been denying and hiding for so long is the very thing that's destroying every legal and political avenue that he has. The videotape testimony they chose to show was largely Republicans yes. mm -hmm. who yep. were incriminating Donald Trump, which I think is a very smart move because it at least draws some of the politics out of it. I did not expect to see Bill Barr as the first video witness in last night's hearing. But when he said Donald Trump's claims of election fraud were bull s mm -hmm. and I told him so right from jump, Jody, when we heard that clip that what that does is it proves Donald Trump's corrupt intent, his criminal mens rea his guilty state of mind. That's just three ways to say the same thing. And it's something we have to prove in court. It's already been proved. So let's get this indictment show on the road. So election results, she had long since checked out and was, in my opinion, only trying to be respectful to Bill Barr and his position as attorney general. And then, of course, in his very Trumpian way, had to say he sucked. And by the way, Trumpian doesn't apply to you. That said, is this exactly what you would expect from your uncle? It's exactly what I expected from both of them. I think Ivanka walked a very fine line. She didn't say anything necessarily incendiary, but, you know, as, as we uh, thought would happen, she decided she needed to come down on the side of uh, what the facts support, which is, of course, that the election was not stolen. And also, as we knew would happen, Donald didn't entirely throw her under the bus, but I just think it's really important to point out that the fact that he said she checked out, although that's kind of rude, isn't really the issue. He's accusing her of perjury, really. That's interesting. I hadn't read it that way, but I see exactly what you mean there. Um, with regard to the two of them, they they certainly have always seemed very close. I mean, she was the one who was mostly by him, his side throughout the uh, presidency, traveled and was a senior advisor that way. How much do you think this is going to strange their relationship? How do you think it's going to play out within the family? I think we've seen for months now as uh, Ivanka and Jared have been increasingly quiet, increasingly out of the spotlight, that there's probably been some strain there for a long time, probably beginning with Donald's perpetuation of the big lie. What's important to remember is that their relationship, whether they seem close or not, is entirely transactional. <laughs> and once one or both of them comes to the conclusion that there's nothing in it for them, then they will move on. That is extraordinary between a father and a daughter. But then we're talking about Donald Trump. So uh, with regard to the first committee hearing, it showed how his inner circle admitted, look, he lost the election, but that he still wanted to overturn it. And in the days since the hearing, Mary, the former president continues digging into his stolen election narrative. You've got this Ph.D. in psychology. So how does this fit with the psychology of Donald Trump that even when he's told the truth time and time again, even when his daughter and other members of his inner circle agrees on the truth, he refuses to accept it? Do you think he really knows he lost and can't accept it? Or does he really believe he won? As is often the case with Donald, uh, when something threatens his idea of who he is, it's actually both. <laughs> um, <laughs> the truth is something he understands on a deep level, but because it so threatens 
uh, not just not just his sense of himself, but his sense of safety. He cannot go there. And by that, I mean, being a loser is just utterly unacceptable. In my family, being a loser means you're going to be destroyed literally or figuratively. So um, obviously, everybody was telling him pretty much you lost, you lost, you lost. So it's not that um, he doesn't understand that, but he still can't accept it. And it So you can hear there, first we start with Glenn Kirshner, who makes it absolutely crystal clear that Donald Trump is donezo, that any reasonable system would throw him away. And I know you say, well, the US system isn't reasonable. And normally you're right, but it's starting to get so ironclad that even the very cautious Merrick Garland might actually have to get up out of his fancy chair and do something. But it's the second part there from Mary Trump, who is a professional psychologist and the family member of Donald and Ivanka, makes it absolutely clear that Donald is a sick, selfish man, right? And what's great here is it's right in the crevice. I don't think Donald Trump is going to be able to make a credible insanity plea. I don't think Donald Trump is going to be able to get out of prison or get out of penalties because he pleads insanity. But what she does say there is critical, that Donald Trump doesn't even love his kids, that he's ready to chuck Ivanka under the bus like he already at least partially has, but he is in this position where because of that mental ego, because of that broken ego, because of the mental and physical sickness, all of that, all of that hitting right now, he can't admit, even though he objectively knows it's not going to save him in court, but he can't admit that he lost. He just can't do it. And so he has trapped himself in his, the prison of his own mind and in a legal argument that is criminal because Donald Trump knows that right now he lost the election. He knows that, but his broken mind won't let him admit that. And his broken ego won't let him admit that. And that's what got him in the trouble in the first place. And that's what's keeping him there. Doctors, lawyers, everyone's delivering awful news to Trump.